anyone out there is anybody out there anyway okay so the answers in genesis video we've just gained some shocking data from americans ken ham did a little blog on it and ken was pretty perturbed because well he's perturbed because he says that islam is coming in and filling in the gaps and he's you know he's more afraid of islam than he is atheist but but the thing that georgia said that really really gets my goat is oh atheists they have a religion too and they don't realize it you know and it's like wait wait okay Be, because they don't believe in god and that's their religion so so every sunday what i do is i set up a little idol uh, or a little uh, a, a little cutout of Jesus, but Jesus is not there because I cut him out of the picture, and I worship his absence, you know. And I and I throw herbs in the hole where the picture where where I cut Jesus's picture out, and that's my religion. I, I worship there not being a God, and uh, and then on Thursdays I worship there not being a Santa Claus. On Fridays I worship there not being a unicorn. So I, I got a full week. Yeah, there's a whole, and of course, I celebrate my not stamp collecting um, on Thursdays. Oh God, I got to start celebrating that too, I guess, because I don't yeah. stamp. Collect. Start the uh, non-celebration or celebration of non-stamp collecting. Yep. We got we got brainless on my channel. What's up, brainless? Yeah, I saw that. There's somebody watching anyway. I, I, we were we were just talking about this on Joe's channel about Ken Ham. What what his strategy is is no, I'm not. You are. I'm rubber. You're glue. He's turned everything around. So it's not that they're denying science. We're denying science. Yeah. yeah. It's not that they have a religion. We have a religion. You know what I mean? So that's it. That's his thing. He turns everything back around. Yeah, and the really weird thing about it is they're kind of saying that religion is a bad thing, that it's diluted. Like, yeah. or or they're claiming relativism, right? Like, whatever your beliefs are, that's what is, you know? And yeah, it's he's like, more of the mind. Yeah, he, he just wants to declare his world reality, and then everybody else is wrong. So, Well, reason and, and scientific um, method are such powerful elements of, of you know, our culture, our society, even though we all complain about how things are going to hell in a handbasket, it's, it's hard to uh, say, oh, uh, you scientifically showed this and, and uh, you, you made a logical analysis uh, and in a very reasoned way came up with this conclusion. That is a very powerful thing. So the only thing that a creationist or a fundamentalist or an apologist can do is to, to try to say, hey, I'm, I'm reasonable too, um, yeah. when they're not. Um, I, I don't know how many times, like I've been at a, I was at a free thinker meeting many years ago and some seminary student decided to come to our free thinkers, you know, meet up and said, you know, you can be a free thinker and be a believer at the same time, you know, or, um, and every, everybody was quiet and respectful, but nobody, I, um, well, I think there was one or two people who weren't shaking their head like, oh shit, you know, but, yeah. um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's just so powerful that you have to try to fool people into thinking you've got reason and you've got science. Yeah. Oh, what am I trying to do here? 
try and, and I think the fallacy would be the, what the two co quay fallacy of uh, well, you do the same thing too, or you're yeah. religious too, so therefore, I don't know what their point is, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he doesn't. Ken doesn't like using the word story either. He doesn't want them to say Bible stories. He wants them to say Bible history or Bible facts, not story, because story lends to that it's just a story. Well, that's something somebody <laughs> insecure does. Yeah. Well, I got one of you that are delayed, and the other one, Dave, your microphone goes in and out. Did you know that? Have you heard about this? Dave? Yeah, let me let me check. It's probably it's it, it's kind of like almost like you move away from it and move closer to it, move away from it, move closer. Maybe that's what you're doing. Uh, I don't know. How about now? That's really good. Okay. I better see now. You, yeah, let's see if you stick with it. Turn the, anyway. no, the noise uh, off. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. Anyway, these guys, uh, God, I wish I could play this, but I can't apparently. Apparently, you can't hear that at all, were they? You hear nothing, right? Nothing. Yeah, well. God, I, I, you think I would have learned my lesson, I think, two years now that I haven't changed any settings on loopback. And the other day, on in, in desperation, I was trying to do a stream with Lance Independent, and he and, and I kept ending up with that gravelly voice. And so I started shutting, you know, buttons off on uh, loopback, and I forgot which buttons I shut off. No, we fucked. Yeah, we totally fucked. Majority of Americans say religion is losing its influence in public life. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I know. It's about fucking time. <laughs> I watched you. it. I watched it. So uh, we can still talking? talk about it because I saw it. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, there, yeah the, uh, basically, yeah, the uh, Christianity numbers are down. And yeah. Of course, like you said, though, they're just saying, well, they're still religious. They're just being atheists or scientisms or whatever else they want to push it onto. You're still like if you talk for a long time it, it trails off. I didn't move. Yeah I know so it's got something to do with if you talk Try for it. a long time I think what's happening is that your noise suppression is pulling you out. Your, your noise suppression is working on you rather than the noise around you. If you got noise suppression on, All right, I, turn, I just turn both of them off. How am I doing now if I keep on talking and talking and talking and talking? Uh, I think it did it again, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll move on. We'll see. So I, I wonder what that article is. Okay, majority of Americans. Uh, majority... Of Americans say, oh, and what, oh my God, I forget what else they said about it. They made some like moral claims that, you know, our lives are going to be meaningless and we have no purpose and all we can do is serve ourselves because we don't believe in Christianity and all this bullshit. I forget what else they had to say about it. Oh, uh, they act like, uh, you know, if you're, if you're not a Christian, then you're some kind of a savage madman running around hacking babies to death. And uh, I, they ever listen to themselves? <laughs> like, you, you, know, you have to prepare um, them. You have to prepare them for cooking. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, I, I I listen to uh, to Lance Lance Bush on Lance Independent. And he's, you know, he's really into ethics. And every single time he goes to the torturing babies thing, you know, like like philosophers do, like philosophers of ethics, they're obsessed with this baby thing, right? And I'm like, leave the baby alone. The children, man, think about the children. Use a different example. Torture puppies, for God's sake, right? 
They never get enough torture. Do they? Oh, let's see here. Oh, most you're, Americans. You're a cat lover. I am. No, I love puppies too. I really love puppies. Okay. My, it's on my puppy is getting big. They get big so fast. I know they do. <laughs> So we went out to dinner on my son's, uh, my twin's 43rd birthday. And uh, there's this friend that uh, who's, who hasn't shown up with his kid for Thanksgiving dinner for a long time. And I think it was about eight years ago, the last time I saw this, this, this little girl. And she was about a foot and a half tall. And my St. Bernard came out and looked at her. And he was like, oh, my God. This thing is a threat, threat level, you know, danger, danger. There's something wrong. This human is too small. And he almost ate her, right? And it would have been like one gulp and he would have eaten her. So we had to like keep the dog away from her. But then I run into her and she's like this fully formed, you know, like uh, I think she's a 10 year old or something. And it's like, what the? And uh, how did you get so big? Good thing Dozer didn't eat her. I would have really felt bad if those are eat my friend's child. But for some reason, my St. Bernard, he was just the mellowest thing. He would never consider hurting anything or anybody, not even a kitten. But when he saw little children, he got just scared out of his mind. He thought it was the freakiest thing he'd ever seen. Children it, it are was, scary if, if, uh, cause if the dog, retaliates in any way they're going to get their ass kicked by oh, the yes. grown up yeah. adult so yep yeah and the way we reacted to him you know because he was he was getting a little he he just looked like he might if she can't, and she was coming at him you know i i think it's because their eyes they're on eye level and it freaks them out somehow <laughs> yeah <clears throat> i don't know okay so here we go our findings. What are our findings? Ah, let's take a look at the findings. I'm interested in this. Another riveting stream from Speed of Sound that answers an atheism. <laughs> I feel riveted already. Yeah, you riveted. You okay. Messed up my, you messed up my sound too. I don't know what you did. Really? <laughs> oh. Yeah. How does it sound now? Am I, do I sound okay now? You're good now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you just got to use short sentences. I'll try to uh, cut it off a little quicker. Okay. Thir February 13 to 25, 13,000 adults almost. Clear statement of the public. Uh, many of the findings. Let's see here. <clears throat> Highlight the growing unease among American adults with the trajectory of religious influence in, in the nation. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't they quit, get out of politics and uh, get out of women's wombs and drop the whole uh, anti-LGBTQ thing? And maybe people will like religion a little more if they just fucking practice what they preach. I mean, maybe... Maybe it's because they've started to stink that people are shying away from them. So a growing unease among Americans. Why, why, why would that be? Why would you be uneasy about Christians when they're supporting uh, President Bozo? <laughs> I mean, for God's sake. Okay. Some 48% of U.S. adults said there's a great deal over some conflict between the religious beliefs and mainstream culture, which is an increase from 42%. Other 29% think of themselves as religious minorities, up from 24%. Oh, boy. 41% say it's best to avoid discussing religion at all if somebody disagrees with you, which is up from 33%. Now, Ken Ham was going on about that. He said, you know, we can't even discuss religion anymore. We can't even we can't even try to convert our relatives at Thanksgiving dinner anymore. They just tell us to shut up. When I was a kid, it was absolutely forbidden to talk about religion and politics in any social gathering. 
you weren't you weren't supposed to bring it up so i mean there was no difference between then and now at least in the subculture that i grew up in his, his new stooge martin isles big thing is and he has been doing this is not compromising with the culture that's that's his slimy way of saying you know we we want things our way yeah and they're always saying and again it's okay you you can have things your way you can have a man woman weddings only belief that's fine but the law says and you know this the same thing that they forget the same law that says you can do what you want you know also has to apply to other people and they always act like they're being there's something's being taken away from them they're not losing anything other people are just getting equal rights or you know whatever the, the issue is so yeah they play this thing of you know they're losing something because somebody else can get married and that Vody and that Vody uh, Vody Bachman guy that he's got too preaching over there. Yeah, he's a a prize too, and he is a, as as a man of color is standing up there saying the the right for the uh, LGBTQ folks to get married should be taken away. Um, by somebody who just not too long ago, you know, was told who he could and could not marry. It's like, it's just shameful, you know, it's just, it really is. Some 72% say conservative Christians have gone too far in trying to control religion in the government and public schools. Okay, and well, 63% of Christians say the same about secular liberals. So now what's going on here? This is all uh, Trump politics. This is all a result of what, what's happened in the Republican Party over the last 10 years. And it's, it, it's basically, it's a divide. It's like, uh, you know, there, there are the woke and there are the conservative nutcakes you know and 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 it's dividing people and it's taking a certain amount of people out of the church and it's putting another set into the church right or or fixing them in the pews they're pasted to the pews but you see what's going on here it's uh we are in a bad place in this country as far as divides and it's a goddamn this thing i got a really close friend somebody I care about a great deal and I I I was afraid to ask but I asked him you still support Trump and he said of course of course I do it's like you're not listening to the right news station you got to start listening to Fox you can't be listening to all this liberal bullshit right and then I'm thinking okay what I listen to is what uh certain liberal well i listen to comedians because they'll pick out the part of, part where trump falls over his, his verb right there falls over his tongue and hi nitty and oh hi maya too and chris peacock and anyway uh and he cheats at golf what i would like to listen to is an entire recording of a trump rally where trump talks from the beginning to the end so that i so that I don't make the mistake of taking them out of context, right? And I, I want to listen to the entire thing, and I'm going to ask my friend to send me a clip because, no, I don't want to listen to Fox News do the same thing that a liberal may be doing, right, and clipping on certain things out of context. I want to listen to the entire thing. But it's really hard to find. It's, it's hard to find anywhere where a politician, where you hear the entire uh, statement that the politician made rather than just clips out of context. So I watch Trump rallies. I, <laughs> I, I, I have to, I, I, I can't help myself. <laughs> Where do you find them? Like, I, I, I want to watch some. Where do you find them? You, usually one of the independents like Pac-Man or Hal Sparks or one of those guys got, uh, what the hell are those? <clears throat> you know, David Pac-Man? No. David Pacman? 
Yeah, he does ind- in, he's an independent news. Um, and Hal Sparks is a, he's a comedian, but he kind of, he, he mostly covers news. Um, How do you spell Because you have to get it Pac-Man, P-A-C-K-M-A-N. Oh, Pac-Man. And are these on YouTube? Yep. And I can get the entire relic. Because they'll, they find the feeds from uh, these obscure uh, sites that are still running cameras on it because Trump's always pointing at the cameras and saying, look at all the fake news back there. And it's like, the only news there is your people because nobody yeah. else will run your stuff because they don't want to get sued. Yeah. So, so if, if I'm going to judge Trump, you know, my friend says I should watch Fox a, News, but no, that's not how I'm going to judge Trump. I will judge Trump based on what Trump says. And something, I judge, yeah, it's something like right side broadcasting or something like that. Are the ones that, that cover it. They're the ones that usually are the only ones that have live cameras. On these, uh, anyway, I can't even I can't even have a rational conversation with this person who I, I really care about it, it, because he just it's it's like he's using a different kind of world or logic or you know it, and, and it just doesn't make any sense. They've made him a messiah, Mike. The, the the preachers and pastors and everything are all saying he's anointed from God and he's actually king of the earth under God's rule and all this stuff. So, and it and I've been telling people it puts a whole other perspective on the Bible, right? When you can take Trump in real time and make him a messiah, right? Uh, you can make anybody a messiah, and it yeah. starts to really question, you know, were all these people in the Bible like Trump? You know, these are the heroes. I seriously, yeah, that's scary. When you know, yeah, they're well, comparing him thing. to David and Joseph and all different other kind of Bible people. There's that, that reminds thing. me of uh, Speed. Yeah, the uh, the do- data over dogma episode didn't make it into the description, but every. Every comment today, this this afternoon, I mean, every every comment has reminded me of the question: Is really make believe? And I swear, it. And and people hate it when you know hated it when uh, God is a delusion. You know, became uh, the buzzword. But I swear, um, it, religion for people seems to be just basically uh, socially encouraged make-believe that's about the only thing you, and, and for some reason trump has become part of that make-believe and um many people think it's real yeah uh, the other thing i realized about the the whole trump thing is that when i listen to trump people talk about why they think he's great even my rational neighbor you know who's a, who's still behind trump and and my friend Okay, what they point out is that Trump is going to get in there and he's going to straighten things out and he's going to do this and he's going to do that and he's going to have all these executive orders and he's going to like change all of these things, right? And then when I look at the other side, which is my side, like I want a president who does very little and that was why I voted for Hillary because I don't think she would have done any harm. And they want a president that's going to go in there and start, like, as my neighbor put it, uh, like a bull in a china shop. He's going to upset the the apple cart. He's going to start ripping things down, right? Well, we live in a representative uh, democracy, and that's not what what we want, right? We (laughs) We want Congress, the elected Congress, to write bills. And the president to sign them or veto them, that's his power, right? We don't want a dictator. And and it just occurred to me that the Republican Party wants that absolute power. And when you look at what they're doing in Congress, they're doing it the same way. They want that House control. And they're, they're always driving for that majority, and they all vote like a like a, a flock of birds tilting one way or the other they all vote the same way it's almost like the democracy the 
basically the, the compromise and the dialogue has gone away. And we what, what we what half of us want, or maybe 30% of us in this country, we want a fucking dictator. And we want the dictator to be the one that we we agree with. So he's gonna do the things that we want. But how are you gonna guarantee that he's gonna do the things that you want you want all of the time? Exactly. Dictators don't fucking do that, right? They do whatever they're gonna, they want. They're gonna turn on you, yep. They, they yeah. will turn on their own mother, brother, sister. Yeah. They'll put a, uh, what, what, what did Un use? An aircraft car- cannon to take out his uncle or whatever? Uh, yeah. They make, a, they make a display of it. So, yeah. And, and his, uh, Trump's lawyer kind of hinted at killing political rivals, right? Which is, I mean, God, where are we living? What country is this again? Because I won't go to Mexico or South America. I won't go to Africa. I won't go to the Middle East. There's a lot of places I won't go because I don't like fucking dictators. And I don't like governments like that. And I want to live here because I believe in the United States. And I believe that the United States is not going to do shitty things like they do over, you know, in some of these other countries. But I'm afraid that come next year... I'm not going to want to live here either. So I'm not going to want to visit the United States. I'm, I'm fucked, right? <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> well, it's, it seems to be chipping away because you've got two more senators or congressmen, which, whichever I are, that are resigning. So yeah, the, yeah their majority is down to about nothing. Yeah, I think... Uh, I, I think uh, Trump is going to lose in a uh, in, in a landslide, and and that is going to restore my faith in people and the country. And and my uh, friend thinks that Trump is going to win by a landslide, and he says when they do, then I'm going to write to you guys and say, see, you should have listened to the right news channel, Fox News. And I responded to my friend. Uh, you won't have to do that because Fox News will be the only channel. It'll be the national channel. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, dear uh, Lita, dear Lita, today so wonderful. He hit yeah, so wonderful. fourteen yeah. hole in ones. Oh, it's so awesome. Yeah, and we're all going to have to get pictures of Trump and put them up on our wall. And I am in no way mocking anybody's language or anything else. I just that's just a bad accent. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, oh. Yeah, so I called this the woo heads of the left. <laughs> so what am I referring to? And I got a really nice little picture. Those woo head, those left left liberal woo heads are uh, really cute. Uh, in my uh, thumbnail for today's show, and what I'm referring to are the uh, that when fundamentalist Christianity, which exists in that bottom third of this country, and then at the upper and uh, the upper third are people that are starting to believe in crystals and they're going crazy with right now psychedelics is uh, psychedelic therapy, which I strongly believe in is starting to become more of a, a fucking cult (laughs) than, (laughs) than science. Right. And, and it disturbs me that one third of the left leaning people are uh, sprinkling crystals in their cereal and one third of the right leaning people are worshiping their God, Jesus, you know, and it's like that leaves like a third in the middle of uh, sane people that are left. What are we going to do? Uh, I'm, I'm not too impressed with the uh, woo heads in the left, basically. And I've been interfacing with quite a few of them. I go to a lot of meetups. And I've been dealing with a lot of people, and I hope none of them are listening to the podcast. But I'm, <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm getting a little worried about um, the magic and magic mushrooms, to tell you the truth, and some of the crazy stuff. And you know, uh, Eastern religion also is another thing that tends to float the left's boat. You know, if you and, go chasing rabbits, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A little concerned about all of that. And it, it, they're going to fuck it up again. They're, they're going to fuck it up so that psychedelics are never used in the manner that they should be used. 
you know, to uh, treat trauma, PTSD, uh, angst, uh, depression, you know, just used as the, the medicine that it is. It's going to end up all getting screwed up because of the woo heads on the left. So. Is there any, has there been any new studies out or anything? Have you heard anything new? Uh, Every day there's a new study on psilocybin. Yeah, they're, 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 uh, the FDA is probably going to approve MDMA therapy. But, but here's the other rub, okay? With psilocybin, what's going to happen is that they're never going to make it legal for you to procure mushrooms by yourself and do them in the privacy of your own home. You're going to have to pay $1,600 for a therapist to do it for you. And uh, that is going to be, uh, I suppose the insurance companies will pay for some of that, but not much of it. They aren't going to pay for a person that just suffers from depression or uh, some trauma that isn't, you know, recorded publicly on the news. And they're going to fuck it up because they're going to want to make money on it. So they're never going to allow, they're never going to uh, make it, you know, legal so that you can, well, they're doing it with cannabis. There's hope they'll do it with psilocybin, but I don't think psilocybin is going to make it because psilocybin is too powerful, it's too effective, and there's too much money to be made for them to allow psilocybin to become legal. And they're going to want that money. And then when they get that money, what they're going to do is they're going to mix a little psilocybin with a little some other drug that they patent and another drug, and they're going to kick the price up to about $900 a dose. And they're going to all make a lot of money, but the average person is going to suffer as a result. I'm an, I'm an optimist, even though things don't always look good. I am uh, holding out hope that, like last time, enough people, because Trump doesn't have any extra voters. He, he's done nothing but lose voters. Yeah. So. Yeah. All you have to do is turn out enough to beat his base, which is what Biden did last time. And there you go. So, and as of right now, it's the economy, stupid. Yeah. Trump lost, I think, just because the economy was such, you know, in a downturn. Yeah. And I, I'm going to hold to Clinton once again. So right now, the economy is up. So... It's the economy, stupid, and we'll see. Yeah, because crooked Joe Biden has done such a bad job that and all the numbers are up. <laughs> yeah, yep. And uh, what's going to happen is like, okay, it's crooked Joe Biden that's doing it, so so it's going to crash. So they're predicting a crash. A lot of my conservative friends have told me that. I'd say, you know, it can't possibly be good for this long. It's going to crash. Uh, Logan, Logan's talking about something. Wait till it becomes like weed, this and that. And hey, the Christian nationalists, like uh, people like Mike Johnson, uh, they want to make all drugs illegal again. So, wow, that's Christian. that's another thing that they're, they're big on. They don't, yeah, they don't want drugs, none of them. So, yeah. Chris Peacock says psychedelics are very useful. I microdosed my mom when she wasn't active in her mind, and it helped so much that I got my mom back. The other thing is, uh, yeah, the, there was a, a news article the other day where a teenager went, uh, called 911, I, I guess because the teenager was having a meltdown. Then the teenager apparently met an officer at the door of the police department. Uh, oh, day. no. What? Oh, yeah. no. I know where this is going. Okay. She got his gun and she used it on herself. Okay. And this is. This is uh, what nice. occurred to me is that in emergency rooms, when there's a meltdown, when somebody's having a mental meltdown from depression, I wish they would test psilocybin as an immediate rescue device to immediately take that person to a different place because I think it would work. In 99% of the cases, there's 1%, of course, like the person has schizophrenia or something where it might make it worse. But God, that would be amazing because I think it would instantly take them out of their selves to the point where they would, where the, uh, where, where the mental event that they were having would subside 
almost immediately. But if it, if it works, I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah, but but how would they test that? How would they test that for FDA approval? There's no way to test that. You would have to test it on vulnerable people that came into the emergency room that were in crisis, right? And nobody is going to ethically green light that study. So it's going to be a long time, but I think it would work. Like if I had, you know, a loved one who was melting down and I was really afraid of suicide, I would recommend a microdose of psilocybin. That's an immediate effect. I don't know. Did I say the S word? Oh, well, we're it, gonna, we're gonna I, get. I know it, yeah, I know it's been it's been shown to help with PTSD, and part of that is depression. So, yeah, maybe that you know could lead to something good. Yeah, there's something interesting about uh, LSD and psilocybin and, and uh, MDMA to a certain extent, and that is that they shut down the default mode network. Well, the default when you when you have depression, basically certain things you're, you're not getting um, activity in in the areas of your brain like the dopamine system and the serotonin system that make you happy. And what happens is you feed that back like the it comes from the limbic system and it and it and, and it goes to the cortex and in the cortex you have this problem of not enough serotonin it goes back to the limbic system and then it starts to cycle as this uh, like everything you see you're going to give it a spin of negative of the negative right you're going to see everything is bad you're looking through. Uh, really bad colored sunglasses and and it goes in a loop and what what psilocybin does and lsd does it immediately shuts down that looping factor so that you no longer have the loop going and, and it's kind of like an obsessive compulsive thing like if a person uh, is really depressed they'll start watching news and they'll watch the sh all this shitty news and they'll start to cry and they have, there's an area of your brain, uh, the uh, anterior cingulate cortex that lights up and you, you basically have this uh, empathy for other people, but the empathy turns into this dread, the sense of, of uh, you know, oh my God, there's so much wrong in the world. And you, and you keep in that loop and psychedelics can take you instantly out of that loop and give you another look at it. And that's why I think they're really effective. I had a moment of that earlier when I saw those cars that were still on the bridge as it collapsed. Did you see that? How many were there? Do they know? I counted like four or five uh, head pairs of headlights that were oh, on that yeah. piece of road coming down. Yeah, that was a, that that was a long bridge that collapsed, and it just kept going. You know, one part after another went down. Yeah. Yep, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, yeah, I was just it, it. It was just going through my head, like, what you know, what what's going through your mind when the you know the the bridge is collapsing, the roads going down, and you're headed towards the water. I mean, you know, what's what's going on in their minds? It's like, wow. Oh, what do we got here? Well, neither former President Donald Trump, 4%, or President Joe Biden, 13%, are seen as particularly religious. The respective supporters felt they stood up for religious groups. Hmm. Though they don't think Trump himself is religious, I think he stands up for the religious beliefs. Well, of course, he's going to say that. <laughs> you have to if you're on... <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially if you're on the right, you have to appease the religious. That's the big chunk yeah. of the base. So, and Democrats believe the same thing. You know, it stands up for stand up for my religious belief. I don't know. Well, I don't know. But again, but again, the difference would be that they want it their way or the highway. Whereas with Biden, even though Biden's Catholic beliefs. Do not agree with abortion. He also is in that, uh, you know, still the, enough of the, you know, what we were talking about. That you can't talk with most of these people anymore. He's still in the old enough school where, yeah, but 
this is the country I live in. Yeah. And, you know, and we have these laws and what, you know, again, that's why other people get rights too. And I can still have my belief that I don't think me and my family are going to get an abortion and that's fine. It's, but you're not going to tell somebody else. And we, yeah, there's so much of this. Yeah. They want it our way or the highway and they're completely forgetting what country we live in where it, everybody's supposed to have the same. So, yep. And again, they're not losing anything when other people get rights or whatever the issue is, healthcare, any, these are things where people are gaining things. Nothing, nothing's being taken away from these people and they make everything that they're, they're taking away everything. They're taking away my country. They're taking away my culture. They're taking away this and this and this. Right. It's like, did, do you, have you forgotten American history? Do you not realize that we're all basically immigrants and that's kind of the thing that helps out, you know, all the different perspectives coming together and finding solutions rather than, oh no, all these perspectives are all going to be uh, keyhole or pigeonholed, I mean, and uh, there they sit. And none of them can yeah, intermix, you can't pick one or the other. It has to be all or nothing. And meanwhile, nothing is getting done, like with immigration and all these other things. Oh, what, what is wrong? Why don't I have why don't I have the ability to shut that message off anymore? What is overlay? Overlay? Okay, I don't want overlay. Uh chat, okay. The thing is gone that uh, where you can shut the message off. Wow. And no, it's then, up at the top and says uh, hide message. Yeah, but it's not showing for me at all. Uh, I have to. I think you may have to scroll all the way to the top. Uh, it does kind of disappear and reappear sometimes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it disappeared. Okay. Gotcha. Got, you got a 100 message trophy in the chat there. I got a what? It says, Restream says you've received 100 messages today with Restream chat. Really? Chat. It only shows, oh, oh, yeah, because I have your paired messages. I only have 59 on my channel. Uh, big fear of mine is being plunged into icy cold water. Yes, the Wim Hof method. <laughs> yeah, it, this happened in Maryland. It didn't happen in Florida. So, yeah, you've got the cold water. Oh, yeah. Those people didn't last very long in that water. Yep. That was uh, Baltimore. Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the, the, at the, uh, the, the, the Scott, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Oh, that's why they call it the Key Bridge. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> It all can, comes together now. I was thinking, what a dumb, what a strange thing to call a bridge. But uh, now I get it. What they call it? The Baltimore it's, Key Bridge, as in Francis Scott Key, apparently. Yeah, for oh, sure. okay. Damn. Damn, that's all you got to do is bump one of those columns and the whole thing falls down. And how many, the ship lost power and drifted into that. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't do anything was, about it. It's like I was I wondering. Yeah. yeah. Don't Shit. they have like a manual override for the rudder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they would. Yeah, I don't know. But you know, that's a lot of weight. I'm sure that would take a lot of power to to um, move the oh, rudder yeah, on a ship like that. Yeah, because it yeah because it wasn't really moving fast. Yeah, it was just the pure mass of it. It just slowly pushed into it. And yeah, they're, they're, it was almost like this, slow motion. Yeah, yeah. And there's a point of no no return where you're not going to be able to steer steer clear of it. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> James has a point. Was, yeah, the, the the when I was seeing it, yeah, you could just sense the that power, you know, just slowly just forcing it. Yeah, that right. easy to knock a bridge down. God. 
I ain't going over no more bridges no more. Like the one that went down. <laughs> That's in, what I was saying. I'm like, I ain't going over no bridges. <laughs> you know, the one that went down in Minneapolis, I was on 35W. And, you know, I drove over that hundreds of times in my life. And I'm like, it, it never occurred to me that anything like that could break, right? How could something this huge with this many lanes of traffic on it break? And it did. It fucking broke. <laughs> it went down. It's like it shook my faith in in driving my car, you know, in, in, in the ground under my feet. It's like, my God. And that was a huge bridge, and it seemed like it was the solidest ground that you could stand on. And all of a sudden, it just starts wobbling and collapses into the goddamn river. Give me a break. Isn't there a department that's supposed to check on that shit? <laughs> I mean, like... Well, a lot of them have like, you know, like that teardrop shaped thing. You know what I mean? So if, if you're, you know, going into it, it kind of, you know, rolls you around it. But the, these seem to be round ones. You know, they didn't have, you know, you know what I'm saying? They, they they should have like those, you know, the the, the uh, I don't know what the term is for it, but there's that, that concrete wall or whatever that's around the pier. And it seemed to be just round. And I've seen other ones where they're, you know, elongated. So if a boat, you know, you don't, you don't bump right into it. You kind of, you know, get pushed to one side or the other. And I'm wondering, yeah, that shouldn't be something that's, you know, some kind of structure so that if something comes along, it's going to kind of, you know what I mean? Nudge to the one side or the other instead of going head on into one of yeah. those uh, pylons. And my, my brother would have been driving home on that Bay Bridge, but he took the day off uh, in 89 when the earthquake hit that, you know, collapse that bridge in Oakland. Uh, and he was he was in his camper working on his camper. And all of a sudden his camper started wobbling back and forth and jumped up on the uh, jumped up from the street onto the curb. And he was yelling at his kids because they thought he thought they were messing with the trailer hitch. And uh, that was his experience with the earthquake. And then he comes out and there's all this collapsed buildings and all kinds of shit. James, James has got it right there. Back in my day, we just kept a can of spinach handy for emergencies. Oh, yeah. There, yeah. There yeah. Go. Yes, yes. Can of spinach. That'll do it. And a corn cob pipe. I was just talking about that the other day when I was like, I don't know, five, six years old. My cousins would pick on me and they were like twice my size. And I was begging my mom to buy me spinach because <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to help. Like, you know, they were definitely twice my height and, and three times my weight. And like, I would have went up to them and hit them in the knee. I could have hit him in the nuts probably because I was the right height for that. <laughs> <laughs> but my mom talked me out of it. You know, she wouldn't buy me spinach because she knew it was going to turn out badly if she did. I got to take on my cousin, Tommy. I'm like, fuck you, there's, Tommy. There's I a, there's a, there's a, pop the cans of spinach there's a, yeah, I could have. There, yeah. There's a Popeye brand of spinach. Yeah, I know there is. Oh there. yeah. Yep. The thing is, I've been making so, Go ahead. This being so good for you because it had all that iron was based on a mistake but that the researcher made when, you know, right, experiments on iron cut off by a digit or something like that. And it never really was as high as, as it was believed to be. So it's even not as nutritious as people think. Yeah, but it's good for you. I uh, like it if it's if it's steaming hot. As soon as it starts to cool off, it, it's like oh, I love fried, I fr fried spinach. It's nice really and good. nice and steamy hot, and that's the first thing you eat. Uh, that's, I yep. like it like that. Fried spinach is good. I like mixing it with mushrooms. You like mixing everything with mushrooms. Not those kind. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Actually, that is the best way to eat magic mushrooms is to eat them fresh and put them in a pan and put some adobe seasoning on them and uh, some olive oil and away you go. Away you go. There's a whole new meaning to stir fry. Yep, it is. Yeah. God, I don't know if I should show this. So you're going to tell folks a little bit about your uh, trip and why, why you haven't been on recently? Oh, I went to Palm Springs and uh, went to Imperial Beach and stayed in a beautiful condo right on the Pacific Ocean. Got to sleep in the master bedroom, one eye open on the white caps breaking on the shore. And had an amazing time with a really good friend named James. And we went just all over, driving all, all over California, through the desert. And... Uh, what is that springs? I, I, I keep mispronouncing Bor it. Borrego. Borrego Springs, right? Went out there and did not see any ghosts. But boy, if you were out there at night and you built a campfire uh, in Joshua Tree Park, like uh, Joshua Tree, uh, I guess that's where that saw U2 song, The Streets Have No Name. Uh, that's what it was about. And it was about... Like, there's a lot of stories of all kinds of spirits and monsters out there. But if you had a campfire with those flickering frame flames on those rock formations, you would see all kinds of things. And then if you did some mushrooms on top of it, holy shit. <laughs> just by coincidence, I just did a video on the Borrego Sand. I know. Man. And I'm like, and, I was hiking there. And Mike was out there hiking there. So it was yeah. pretty, yeah, if I would have put two and two together, I didn't realize what that it was the same part of California or we would have had him uh, give give some live feedback. But, yeah, I could have given you some live feed out there. We were out there in the afternoon. The, the most frightening thing I saw was there's a pond out there with these really neat croaking frogs in the middle of the desert and there were a million bees gathered around the edge of the pond drinking water. Like I mean, just thick with bees. It was it was incredible. And then, and then we we went on this wonderful walk back toward this uh, canyon, and it was incredible. It was really neat. It was a wonderful trip. Had a really good time, connecting with a with one of my childhood friends. You know, for about a week. And, and I'm going to go back next year, and we are going to go camping in Joshua Tree. I think. Is where we're going to camp, and we're going to build a campfire. And uh, I'm not going to say what else we're going to do. <laughs> you'll have a, and you'll have a, a Borrego Sandman story to tell. Yep, we'll have a story, and yeah, we'll have some monsters. That'll be cool. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was a, like a one-off thing, you know, because I, it, it, it was like a bucket list thing. I want to go out there and spend, you know, a week with them once. But now I think I might do it every year because it was just so enjoyable. Just had a wonderful time. That's awesome. Yeah. Good to hear you had a good time. Well, it's like being a, on another planet, for God's sake. Have you been to Joshua Tree National Park? I've only, uh, the only thing I've seen out west was uh, Red Rocks. Okay. When I was in Colorado. Yeah, Joshua Tree is like, oh, it's this, uh, I, I think it's called Monzo Granite. And it's a particular kind of granite where it's got grains that are probably, uh, oh, the size of a, a little bigger than a rice grain, maybe the size of a popcorn. And, and they're easy to break off. So you can scrape the granite and these grains of granite will come off of it. And what happens is there's tremendous winds, a Santa Ana winds coming through the Coachella, Coachella Valley, and they carve these these shapes so that a lot of people think, uh, like uh, my friends, my friends like it. It just seems like something did this, right? Like somebody did this because the carvings are just so unbelievable, and it leaves big boulders sitting on top of other boulders because it undermines them and stuff, and it's just really an incredible landscape i thought i was been, on planet. i've been to san diego and uh, la but it was on business so i was always in the city you know i didn't really have the time to go exploring or anything yep pretty cool but perhaps one of these days yep 
I'll see if I can get a. I would like to see the Grand Canyon. I think uh, that's one thing I would like to see. Let me see if I can get you a picture. Oh, nope. Apparently, my pictures have not downloaded. I don't know why. Make sure you uh, check in the in the backgrounds real good for monsters. Yeah. You never definitely know. Definitely for monsters. Why aren't they downloading? I don't know. Anyway, can't do that. And you've got a lot of um, a lot of other mythologies, and uh, including the natives that have a lot of spirit stories and everything too about those areas. Oh, I you might run into a lot of different things out there. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! Trying to find you a picture, but I can't uh, seem to get it to uh, work properly. Oh, not working properly. You missed everything. Oh, huh? You messed everything up. I messed everything up. Yep. Or the gnomes did it. Or the gnomes, yeah, the gnomes did it while you were gone. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was going on Lance's channel that uh, did it, I think. Anyway, that's uh, Joshua Tree. There you that's go. Some of the rock formations. Pretty cool. Neat. Very neat. You can't make it bigger, and I don't know why. Apparently, photos, you can't do that. Uh, there were some really awesome formations and took a ton of pictures and uh not many of them are showing up Pretty cool very relaxing and wonderful anyway how's, th how's things going with scott in the uh yeah oh the yeah great, the, in the great texas outback there the cow farmer yeah scott the cow farmer no i'm yes. the uh, uh the cow observer. Cow observer. It's my my son and his wife that are raising the cattle and um, herding the donkeys. Are they are they raising them for uh, the meat or? Uh, <laughs> are they more? Basically, like the John Deere the John Deere lawnmower <clears throat> broke down, and uh, my daughter in law just decided no. Because she didn't want to do the push mower, so she thought, "Let's get some livestock in here, so they'll eat all the grass, and I won't have to worry about mowing." And uh, that's how it started. But then um, she found out if we just buy one or two more cattle, um, we are eligible for the um, the uh, tax exemption for the um, for owning livestock or whatever. So. Um, they went ahead and decided to do that. Yep. So how many? You got what? Three, three head of cattle. Three cows. Two donkeys. And two, two little mini donkeys. Yep. And they're going to eat that grass, and they're going to come up to the house, and they're going to say, "Feed me." And, yep. yep. They're going to develop wonderful marbling. And uh, I'm sorry. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, especially those little ones, man. You want to get those and lure them into the dining room. Yeah. <laughs> Teach them to, to lay on their back on top of a platter. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> Roll over on platter. This is a picture from the deck. The I vegans say. just unsubscribed, you know. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Have a nice life, vegans. <laughs> Vegans will be glad to know that my friend talked me into smoothies while I was out there, and I've been eating nothing but vegetables and fruit. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Every now and then I throw in a ribeye and make a smoothie out of that. But And I meant I mentioned that, and my, and, my, and my wife said, you know what, I, I think I'm going to start doing my smoothies again. So there you, yep. there you go. It's actually pretty goddamn good. I made some really tasty vegetable and tomato juice with hot sauce and uh, Italian seasoning. And yeah, pretty good. Well, she's like you. She's got a bunch of stuff and different 
herbs and everything she wants to get and nuts and seeds and yeah there's supplements always and all that stuff so yeah yeah and you put them all in there i think you can even put your supplement pills in there and it'll turn them into powder and that'd just be a really remarkable way to make it yep ribeye smoothie i gotta try that uh that would that, that would be a sin okay that's, that's for when you lose your teeth yeah, that that's the only sin you, I really believe in is putting a ribeye in a in a um, uh, blender. <laughs> that was me. I was back at the dentist this morning, and the one girl uh, come out. She goes, "You back again?" I'm like, "I'm always back again. Yeah. <laughs> always getting my teeth fixed." But I try not to complain because people have a lot of other issues that are not easily resolved, and like said worse comes to worse you can get some dentures and you still have teeth so i, I try not to complain about having crappy yeah, we, teeth, but, uh, we have herds of goats in minneapolis now that they're moving around to kill the buckthorn and all the invasive species and so when you go for a walk there will be this little herd of little tiny goats chomping stuff they're pretty cool and they got and they, out they escaped and they're, and they're using that one breed of uh, duck or bird or whatever it is to go through the rice paddies or whatever, too, so they don't have to use uh, yeah. herbicides and stuff. They just go through like a machine, just eating all the, the little critters and whatever. The, uh, oh, yes, but here's what, what you whatever do. Whatever messes with the rice. So, Paraspera, here's what you do. You love veggies, but you need to get protein or some wonderful protein powder that's got cocoa in it and uh, makes a kind of a sweet drink. But uh, there's other protein powders you can put in. And then, you know, just eat a steak, <laughs> you know, have a vegetable smoothie and then eat a steak and eat like I'll eat six eggs, you know, for protein. Got to have that protein. Yeah, that's old school. Joe says, uh, just fence it off and put some goats on it. That's that's like old school when the sheep used to wander around outside the White House and stuff to yep. keep the grass trained. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Let them do the work instead of pushing that damn lawn more. And it's better for the environment. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. I don't know what happened to my photos. I don't know why they didn't download. Anyway. Stop it, James. I'm going to want a steak. <laughs> I'm already wanting a steak. <laughs> You're looking at steak all day walking around. That's right. I'm, I'm going to sneak out into the, into the field at night. Of course, I might get shot. Because a big fire. I think it was coyotes. This is my friend Steve Peterson. He was uh, the mayor of uh, virginia minnesota where i came from and he did a lot of political stuff and he was an incredible person and we lost him a couple of years ago and his his uh wife sent me this picture this morning that's a pretty cool picture of him he was uh a character that is that is a cool picture you know? yeah it's like yeah. having a good time yeah <laughs> pretty pretty well depicts what he is or, or, or what he his personality bevo we called him and uh he he was always he'd always have nicknames for people and he was just just funny all the time he was amazing anyway cheers to old friends yep i miss him goddamn Hello, brain Tux. how you doing yep Anyway, he uh, he was very much like L. Franken uh, in personality and style, and he had the same sense of humor, and uh, pretty cool. Anyway, guys, I think we're gonna get out of here. Shooter in the head. I just thought we'd have we have to have a little presence, otherwise YouTube and everybody's gonna forget who we are. And you know, we got to get on once in a while. But I've been studying uh, neurophilosophy and neuroscience, and I think I have a lot of things to say. But every time I get ready to say something, I think, no, I need to know more. I need to learn a little bit more about this or that. So that's what I'm doing.
learning, learning stuff. I told you, Dan Dan Dennett makes a whole lot more sense than Castro does. So. Oh my God, Dennett is just wonderful. He, I mean, he's he's got a, it's a, little, a lot. It's a lot, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm worried about it. it. I was trying listening to, get to it read. So. I was listening to him on an interview recently, and he seemed to be out of breath a lot. How old but, is he now? Uh, he, I think he's eighty something, eighty four, something like that. But he's still brilliant, and it's pretty cool. It, his he's just so so sensible, and people absolutely hate him for that. <laughs> he is he is, he is a little overweight though, isn't he? Yeah, a little bit. He always has been. Yeah. He's pretty cool. I hope he's okay. Uh, the other one that I read, uh, Patricia and Paul Churchland, okay, are people who uh, are, they're eliminativists. They don't believe in, like, they think we should abandon folk psychology and abandon all talk that we have about qualia and all this bullshit. And those two have just been hated and hated. And people have uh, strawman them. And I started reading a Paul Churchland book while I was while I was out in uh, San Diego, and uh, he is fucking brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and he just totally got discounted because he didn't go for the woo, you know, and that's what I mean by the woo heads of the left, they will just shit all over a person like that. That's uh, or anybody that says scientism or physicalism or materialism. You know, there's a whole group of people that just want to jump on, jump all over that, and it is kind of sad to me. So, what do we got here, Vesta Freya? We got something, a great recipe. Ooh, is this a smoothie recipe? Shakshuka. A smoothie recipe? We got Yahooligan in the chat there. You can thank Yahooligan for the super chat that got me singing. What does it say? Are you sure you want to leave YouTube? What the, what the hell? Oh, Shaksuka. Ooh, Shaksuka sounds good. Oh, my goodness. That looks great. I'm going to go make that right now. I got to go. <laughs> we got to go now. <laughs> if you, you want to hear Dave sing, I put up a short. We were having fun over at Don Joe's channel yesterday. And, uh, it's on Yahoo your again. I put up the short, yep. yep. Yahoo again put up a super chat to get Dave to sing because they were talking about my deep voice. So they wanted to hear my deep voice sing. So we had we had a little fun. And uh, thanks to Yahoo again for the super chat. And Yahoo again also subscribed, subscribed at my channel too. So Bree, you know. always get here when we're going to shoot it in the head. Is, is, that, Hello, on, Bree. is that on purpose, Bree? <laughs> Anyway, uh, oh God, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I linked your uh, your your uh, Kentucky atheist Ken Amorost in my description. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah we'll go check that out. Uh, we're Kentucky atheist. Uh, we're check out the some Ken Ham talking about uh, how much uh, we really don't like him and all yep. that he does and his plans. You know, what um, he's going to be doing. I didn't get the uh, link for this, but. If you go to Atheist Junior's channel, apparently he recently did a debate with uh, with Kent Hovind. Yes, he did. Um, oh, that was cool. pretty good because you know he he just basically didn't fall into his bullshit. Okay, it was highly recommended. And uh, have have y'all um, watched much of Mister Anderson's channel? A little bit, yes. Yeah. Um, he looks kind of interesting. Uh, he's a lawyer, but he also like debates creationists. So he um, apparently got Donnie, you know, Donnie deals into such a state that he refused to answer any of his questions. <laughs> so, really? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go find that and watch that. Yeah. But yeah, okay. as far as an up upcomer, Mr. Anderson and uh, for a, uh, for a, a, a pretty good um, Kent Hovind debate, go on to Atheist Junior's channel and uh, look look that debate up. Yep. Ouch. And AJ, you can see in the picture there. He was okay, I'm going to link the, that. I'm going to link just for the occasion. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to link AJ in my description. And I put it in the chat. And 
let's see the other one are you going to get the link to the other one that you just mentioned because uh well i i don't know the specific one so i'll have to i would have to do some research and you know i don't believe in doing that scott but yeah just go to mr anderson's channel it'll be there yeah it says, okay yeah, it's, it's old mr, mr. mr. anderson yep yeah, mr anderson is the name of the channel yeah, and his right. his tag tagline is he's 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 mean to uh, he's mean to creationists or something like that, which okay. I thought was a funny a funny well, he, tagline. He did real well in uh, debating the person with the Hawaiian shirt that I don't like seeing. Okay, Mr. Anderson, <laughs> styles come together. Okay, where's this? Uh, am I gonna find it under live or videos? Probably video. I always look under videos for that kind of stuff. Okay, I can't can't seem to. Do I have the right Mr. Anderson? Uh, young guy, young guy. Ish. Yeah. If you can't find it, I'll get you, I'll get you a link, Mike. Well, okay. Hold okay. on. Just Is that hold him? On. I'm Is, that him? Is that the one? Uh, I'm on a different tab. Hold on. Hold on. No, that's not him. Okay. Uh, this guy's you know middle aged looking. I, want to, I, want him, I think. Okay. No, that's not him. Okay, not him. So how many? Uh, you realize how many Mr. Andersons there are? <laughs> There's a lot of Mr. Andersons, my friend. I've, oh, I'm subs. I'm subscribed. I'll, I'll I'll find it here. Yeah, here we go. I've got it. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, here we go. Uh, Chris, Chris it. Peacock, put it up. Oh, let's see, Mr. Anderson. Here we go. The right one. Oh, my God, I'm not subscribed. Beating up on Kent Hovind, is it that one? That's the right one. That's the right one. Cool. He he beats up on him pretty good. He does a, he does a good job. Okay. Let's see. He floats. He, he he shows up in some different streams on some other channels too. Looks like um, from a month ago, cornering a cornering a debater so badly he refuses to answer. Oh, Donnie, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> from a month ago, let's see. Let Here, I've see I've it. got the link. I'm gonna put it in the private chat. Uh, beating up on Ken Hovind, debate techniques, debate, what is science, 12 days ago, uh, three weeks, oh my god, okay, you're putting it up, you're, you're putting it where? In the private chat, private I'm also chat. now putting it in the live chat, but okay. without any kind of label or anything. Oh, that is just worth watching, okay, I'll put that in the description. And yeah, put it in live chat. Okay, so we got a few things in our description, which makes our stuff actually worth it. I mean, nobody's going to watch this shit, but but my descriptions are actually kind of useful. Hey, and I wanted to tell everybody that I got onto SJ's channel. She threw a link out, and I was on it. Bam. And yeah. I, cool. I, I got myself on SJ's channel. It was on. It was on my little little tiny bucket list <laughs> oh i gotta watch this one. and we had a good conversation uh jamie hopped on there who's a protestant he's got a channel and blaster hopped on who's uh, another non-believer and we had a priest come on uh, i think it was father jonathan i think his name was and we all had a nice conversation and we didn't kill each other or blow each other up or nothing Amazing. yeah yeah, I kind of like talk to SJ about a few things. I can't remember what I got. A, she pissed me off. She about. said, "She said, oh, well, I'll come on your channel sometime." And I was like, "Okay, I'll have a fun topic sometime." We'll yeah, maybe I'll come on as a guest then if you let me know when you have her on. That'd be cool. All right. We could talk. Yeah. We okay. Can be civil. Let's, let's get out of here, guys. <laughs> let's get out. Ready. Thanks, hey, yeah. thanks everybody for stopping by both the streams. Appreciate it. We got a lot of, a lot of folks stop by between the two channels and a lot of uh, chats going on. Yeah, I see a lot yeah. of new names. You, you people better come over here and subscribe to my channel, Stephen or yep, Jasper. Yep, come right. on over, subscribe to Mike. We're trying to get him to six six six. So 
Yeah, we're you know, a demon orb would love to be involved in that. So we we drop back back out. Away. Yeah, we dropped back down to six four four, so we got a ways to go again. Now we lost four subs somehow over over my vacation. Or you, need, you need twenty two. Uh, me tw well twenty four now. I think twenty four. No, 22. Well, for 644, it would take 22 to get us to 666. Yeah, 22. You're right, Dave. Okay. Anyway. Drop, drop Mike's link before we go here real quick. Scott. Yeah, you guys got to hurry up because I, like, I got a heart monitor. Hold on. on one minute. We're trying to get you some subs, sir. I'm going to die pretty quick. So, I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Brainless, Brainless is ask, asking for a link. So drop, oh, drop a link there. A link they'll, the And they'll give you a subscription there, Mike. Open link in new tab. Okay, I need to wait a minute. But if I put it on, put it in my chat, you got to put it in your chat, Dave, because I don't have your chat open. Or I don't yeah, have. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me. Okay. Let me, let me get it. I can get it open. I'll get it. And Captain Desk. There you are. There you go. There you go, sirs, ma'ams. Okay. Yeah, I gotta get me up to six 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 before I go. I mean, I'm like I'm I'm on death's door. I'm knocking. <laughs> you got he's so close. So I'm close. one smoothie away from the grave. Got to, got to get that smoothie. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good good talking to you guys. Yep. I'm gonna go. Have to you. A, I'm gonna go have a blackberry, strawberry, and watermelon smoothie with uh, additional nutrients added. Y'all got me hungry. I was up early today because I was at the dentist early. And, uh, yeah, you got to eat. Yeah. Okay, I'm guys. Hungry. All right. Good talking to y'all. Yep. Goodbye, Bye. everybody. Thank you, everyone, for showing up on both channels. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.